Mike, it's your first Sun Valley Conference. What are your impressions so far? Um, oh, mate, look, it's pretty amazing. It's uh, it's like walking around inside the business books I grew up reading as a, as, <laughs> as a kid in university. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a starstruck atmosphere. I have to remember that I have a we have a real place here and um, try to do some real work. But it's um, it's it's a pretty incredible crowd they have. Who's the most interesting person you've spoken to? Uh, I can't really drop names, but let me say I've been tempted to ask for my first or second selfie ever, <laughs> but I have not done so yet. You guys put out something recently that caused a lot of stir, this m and term sheet you call the M&A process, uh, inefficient, broken, etc. cetera. Um, how did that go down with your bankers? Um, oh, look, I think fine. Nobody disagreed with our statements about the M&A process. Uh, they might have disagreed with our way of attempting to improve it or solve it. Um, but generally, it's been pretty well. I think it's probably the, the legal firms that like it less um, than, the, than the bankers. And you, as part of it, you put out this term sheet that sort of anyone, it's free to use, right? Anyone can yeah. essentially use it and apply. Has there been any uptake as far as you know so far? Uh, not as far as we know so far. Um, uh, but look, we've done 20 plus deals. We're very experienced at doing this. We have put down a set of terms that we think are very reasonable, fair to both sides. Um, and if anything, a little bit um, buyer unfriendly, you know, uh, prospect friendly, um, which is the way we think they should land. Um, the problem with the process is you end up both kind of almost hating each other by the end of this bludgeoning lawyers back and forth. Right. And then you got to work together and it's just this negative environment created. So we thought, look, can we shortcut a lot of that? Um, which is very similar to you've seen in early stage financing, um, you know, uh, seed stage docs, convertible notes, um, Series A notes around the world. People have open source documentation to just make that process easier. And if you say using this standard doc, people are comfortable with knowing what Well, that let's means. talk about that because VC is another area, particularly in, in tech companies like Atlassian, where uh, you, seemingly you have to get that stamp of approval. You yourselves took some money back in 2010 that you didn't necessarily need, but you needed it because you needed essentially the community to, to give you guys the, the thumbs up. It, should the same thing happen there where the VCs, are, there's sort of a, a model that is more friendly to the companies and, and gives VCs less power? Um, look, it's confusing from a VC perspective because obviously for them that's an exit event. So they're trying to maximize uh, the speed with which they get their money and how much money they give. Um, they're not necessarily incentivized at that point to be entrepreneur friendly. It's sort of the end of their uh, our journey with a company. Um, I think they should see it as these entrepreneurs have built something great, continuing that process on and having it find a good home. Um, the economics of it's not in the term sheet. Obviously, people are going to pay what they're going to pay. Um, but I, I think they should look upon it favorably. It makes their world easier and more frictionless. And what do you get by not being based in Silicon Valley? Because you're one of the biggest tech companies, I guess, that is not only not based there, but also you as the CEO, co-CEO, uh, neither of you are there. Yeah, look, I think it's part, we're part of a bigger trend. Um, if you Shopify from Canada, Spotify from Sweden, there's, there's a series of, of tech companies now that are growing up outside the valley. Um, look, I think we, we've always benefited from having, we would say, one foot inside the valley and one foot outside, right? The valley is amazing with its creativity, change the world optimism and the things, but it does have this frothy, you know, smoke and mirrors world and, and it's very insular, it talks to each other. Having a foot outside gives us a very practical customer outlook, right? Sydney's a big city, um, it has real customers. We have a big office in Amsterdam, same in Europe, um, with real problems to go solve. And I think having both camps in balance in the organization has actually always been a strength for us. Just last question, you famously don't have a sales for, force. The product is sort of, you know, comes word of mouth and, and, and organically. At this point, being the size you are now, would it not make sense to, to sort of add the sales force in? Uh, we, do have, we do have a sales force. Um, it is uh, bigger now than it's ever been, but I, uh, it's orders of magnitude smaller than companies of our equivalent size. Our goal is to make our sales process efficient and effective for us and for the customer at every point on their journey. Um, so we do have a sales force for um, uh, growing larger customers, um, but our customer acquisition cost at every stage along our curve remains very, very low and competitive. You see that in our economics.